tryoutspeaking.ca. IELTS Speaking Tips on Can Understand the Question. Today I'll be going over four different things on how not understanding the IELTS speaking question can have an impact on your score, what you should avoid doing, six different strategies that you can use, and phrases that you can use. I'd like to tell you to try not to worry or panic. I know you'll be nervous on test day, but when you panic, your fluency can really be affected and you can make a lot of mistakes. It also may take you one or two minutes to adjust to an examiner's voice. The examiner might be from another country and you're not familiar with his or her accent, but don't worry because you should be able to adjust within a couple of minutes. To help you to adjust to the examiner's voice, you can make sure that you're ready for the predictable topics that are first asked in the IELTS speaking test. These topics are about home, work, or study. So prepare responses for these questions and after about two minutes, you'll um, feel more confident and ready for the um, next questions. Now I'll talk about what not to do. You don't want to pause too long. Like pausing for 10 seconds is not good. You want to fill up that time by saying something. Also, you don't want to struggle to answer any questions with hesitations or false starts. This is likely to happen if you don't understand the question and you're not sure what to say. So I'll introduce the strategies that you can use to avoid doing that. So don't want to, you don't want to say, I think, um, uh, I think, um, no, I uh, avoid that as much as possible. What you can do? Well, the first thing you could do is to ask to repeat the question. You're allowed to do this, and the examiner um, can do this once for each question. You don't want to do it for every question, but it's accept acceptable to do it for several questions. You can uh, ask it differently. You can say, I'm sorry, my hearing isn't 100%. Can you please repeat the question? Or another way, I didn't quite get you. Can you say the question again, please? Also, you can ask for a definition. This is a definition of a word. So don't say something like, what do you mean? Ask for the word that you want. So say, excuse me, what does the word rubbish mean? Sometimes you may not hear the word, so guess what the word sounds like. So you can say, excuse me, what does the word rubbish mean? If the first two strategies don't work, then you may have to turn to something like guessing the question and providing an answer to it. Maybe you've understood about 75% of the question, and it's better to give an answer than to stay silent. Even if the answer is relevant, irrelevant, I mean, um, but who knows, maybe you're providing an exact, exact answer to the question. Another thing you can do is just to say, I, do, I didn't understand the question. This is an honest response, and it can happen to anyone, even native speakers who might be mixed up with uh, something you were saying but I would not use this more than once. A fifth thing is just to give a general response that can be used for any question. Um, also, I would only use this a maximum of one time because the examiner might understand that you're using this as a strategy and they may not consider this answer at all when they're rating you. Um, but if you say something like, my mind is drawing a blank on this topic, I really don't know what to say. Can you move on to the next question, please? If you look at that response, you're actually being fluent. You're saying some good vocabulary, like drawing a blank, and you're demonstrating some grammar. So that's better than just staying silent. Like the topic before, or the strategy before, 
you can also give a general straight statement about the topic. So this time you know the topic, so you're going to say something about the topic generally. And although this may not answer the question, you are speaking. So if the topic is playing outside, you can say, I haven't played outside for ages. And my memory of this is a blur. So I can't think of anything to say at the moment. All right, so in conclusion, you can miss a few questions and it probably won't affect your score at all because the examiner is considering your whole test with that has a lot of questions in it. And in general, your speaking ability for most of the questions, not uh, for a few messed up questions. Also, you don't want to panic or stay silent, as mentioned before. And I would say to use the first two strategies first of either asking the examiner to repeat the question or asking for a definition of a specific word. And if those two don't work, you can use any of the other four strategies that I just mentioned. Remember that it's important to stay fluent. Well, thank you for watching.